Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and creative. Today we have a really fun class. We're going to be doing it in black and in color. I'm very excited for both of them. I really enjoyed creating them for you. So getting down to it here, we are going to need for class a Micron pen. I happen to have the 01, but if you have a PN or an 05 or an 05, three you're welcome to use those I also have my Pigma pen because I've never grown up as a Zen Tangler and this is this is the pen for beginners but I still love working with it it's a great one so if you have this one you can use that as well and then I also have my Signo Uniball pen you know me it's my favorite white pen and I also have today a gold jelly roll metallic pen. This is a great pen and we'll be using it to add some embellishment on the black tile. So if you have a gold pen that's metallic, ha have that handy. And I also have a uh, graphite pencil and a tortillon or blending stump that we will be using for shading in the black and white piece. And then finally here, I want to talk about the beautiful honeycomb tile. This is at tangledyogi.com. This is my website. And if you go there to our Tangled Yogi shop, you can pick up a pack of these and um, support me during this time of social distancing. And I would really love the support. I also have them in uh, a really pretty tan color as well. They're great paper. They don't warp and they receive color really, really well. Um, check them out at the Tangled Yogi shop. So with that said, let's get started with class. Okay, so I've got my pencil in hand, my honeycomb tile ready to rock. Here we go. We're gonna start by making our string. So we're going to start by dividing the space and you can see that I'm just going to make a line going straight down the center from one point to the next. And then I'm going to turn my piece and I'm going to do it again. So here's another point and I'm trying to keep my lines as straight as I can. Now if you want to use a ruler, you're welcome to. Um, I'm just going to go by sight here and I'm just coming through that central line right in here. So uh, you can see that I've got this nice intersection of all my lines here. Now if you are a little bit nervous about um, doing circles, I happen to have this really great tool here that I work with a lot. This is uh, the Picket uh, Circle Maker, or Circle Master, and uh, I'm just going to go down to uh, this particular one right here, and I think that this is the half inch circle, and I'm going to come right in and center that on the line here. Now, if you want to hand, uh, hand do it, you're totally welcome to do it. I've just got mine handy, so I put it down right in there. If you have a dime, you could use a dime or um, a nickel and put that in there. It really doesn't matter how big that circle is, just not too, too big. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna to start to divide the space even more. And I'm still working with my pencil here to help create a little bit more of what we're doing. So I'm gonna come into the spaces in between my lines here, and I'm just gonna mark the place where I think center is right up at the top. You can see that I'm just doing a little dot there to help me figure that out. So I'm just going ahead and making a little dot right in the middle in between the lines here. And I'm just turning that little hexagon around, that little honeycomb tile. And then once I have that, I'm going to start to build outward from the center. So if you are a little bit nervous about uh, starting with your pen right away, I'm going to keep on working with my pencil just until we build the string and then we'll do some overdrawing for today. So you don't have to feel like you have to start with your pen right away. Okay, so what I'm going to do is down here on the string, I'm going to come out about, mm, I'm going to say a half an inch and I'm going to make a dot. And I'm going to do that on all the lines. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking about where half an inch is and making that little dot. And then once I have that, I'm going to start to build. So I'm going to make this nice and big. And what it's going to look like is I'm going to do one more dot right in here. And that is the focal point for where 
these other dots are going to land. So you'll see in a minute what I'm up to. So I have that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a very soft, almost like a star in the center. Just like so. So we're still actually building our string. So for those of you who are feeling a little bit more traditional, don't worry, we are still doing it the traditional Zen Tangle style here by building our string. So take a moment to finish up your star and then we're going to continue on. Okay, so I'm turning my little star on its side here and you can see that I have these two points right here. I'm going to come up just above it and make a dot. I'm going to turn my piece and do it again. And I'm just going around to each one and going above those two dots just like so. Now once you've had an opportunity to go all the way around it'll look like you've got little planets orbiting your little sun here. And it's just a little bit above that point here. So you can see here's my two points and the dot is just a little bit above. So now I want you to think of a Hershey's Kiss and it's just going to go ahead and connect in the shape of a Hershey's Kiss. Can everybody see that? See how that looks like a little Hershey's Kiss? So I'm just going to come in, dip down and out. Turning my tile as I go to make it easy for my hands. And just moving right along. So there you have it. So go ahead and finish your little Hershey's Kisses and then we're going to continue to build our string outward. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and build out just a little bit more here. So I've got my star in hand and we're going to start to make some dots up towards the top of our piece. And I'll make this just a little bit further in here. So you can see that I've got my line that's going all the way up to the point here. I'm going to make one dot that's right on the edge of the point and then another one that comes down about a quarter of an inch. Just like so. I'm going to do that all the way around. So there's my line, one that goes up to the edge and one that comes down a quarter of an inch. I'm turning, one that goes up towards the edge and a quarter of an inch. Turning again, edge, quarter of an inch edge, quarter of an inch, edge, quarter of an inch, and there you have it. So I've gone all the way around and done that. Now all we're going to do is start to make triangles that connect to the Hershey's Kisses. So what that will look like is we'll go one and two. And I'm just turning my piece as I go. just moving my way through. And you can see that it's a really easy way to connect. And I've got one more coming up right here. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around. We're going to continue with the string here just for a little bit longer. I'm going to turn the piece on its side here. and I'm going to blow this up so it's really nice and big for you. So remember that dot that we put up here? What we're going to do is we're going to make two dots on either side of where the triangles are. And you can say that they're not in the middle. They're a little bit um, up towards the top. I would say we're about maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch away from the top here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and make a triangle. And you can see that I'm still working in my pencil. I'm going to turn my tile once again, coming in and just connecting to those dots right there. So I'm just going in. You can see I've made a dot right here and right here. And all I'm doing is connecting turning my tile, 
coming a little bit above where halfway point is and turning, coming in and connecting and turning. Last one right here. So that now when I zoom out, look at how neat that is. It's such a pretty, pretty um, string that we have to work with. Now, believe it or not, there's still one last component in this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this from the bottom because I think it'll, it'll be easier for you. Um, maybe not, depending on how you feel. Remember this dot right here that we were working with? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come about a quarter of the way down from this area and all I'm going to do is go ahead and connect to that piece. So I'm going to turn. See that dot right there? I'm going to come in and I'm going to connect. Turning coming in and connecting. So you can see, not quite at the halfway point, really just about a quarter of an inch away from the top here. Here's the next one. So all I'm doing is just turning my tile and looking for that dot and connecting to it. Turning again. And here comes the last one. So that when I scroll out, now you can see we have quite the string to work with, don't we? It's going to be pretty fun. All right, we can let go of that pencil now. Let's get our pens ready to roll. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do something that I like to call an overdraw. And that's basically where you're going to go over certain parts with your pen that we've already drawn in on the string here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do an overdraw right on this triangle. And you'll see that all I'm doing is connecting and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little dot right up at the top here and then I'm going to go again and make a nice aura on the inside. So I'm going to turn my tile, go to the next one, And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do an aura. So these are just going to be for the part of the star that we're working on. So you can see that I'm leaving the outer triangles alone right now. So I'm just coming in and just doing the internal pieces of the star. Turning my tile. And coming down and doing the internal. And I've got two more to go. You can see I've got these two to go. You go ahead and finish up yours. I'll finish up mine and we'll meet back up. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around in here. And we're going to start to fill these now with some tangles. So one of my favorite tangles that I learned, and it was one of the first ones I ever learned, is betweed. And so we're going to do betweed inside of those legs of the star. I'm going to blow this up here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in right on the side here, and I'm just going to make a gentle curved line that comes down almost like a diagonal. Then I'm going to go up a little bit and I'm going to do another curved line, but watch, it's going to come right off to the side a little bit. It's not in the center, it's off to the side. I'm going to come up again and connect and then I'll do it again. So you can see that I'm just going off center every time I hit. So see how this one went off center and this one went off center, this one's going off center just weaving and bobbing through here. 
And you can see that I'm coming up and over. And then I'm going to come right up in here and I'll stop. So you can see that it gives this kind of woven husk kind of look to the piece. Let's do it again together. So here we go. I'm going to come over to the side. I'm coming down at a soft diagonal angle here. And then I'm going to come up about, I'm going to say a quarter of an inch and I'm coming off center. See how that didn't hit very much? It's not in center, it's off a little bit. Coming up and over. I'm gonna do it again. Coming up and over. Then I'm gonna come up a little higher and over. See how I'm off center. I'm not connecting at the center, I'm staying off. And then I'm going to go again right over here. And then here comes my last one right here. Doesn't that look so cool? All right, let's do it one more time together and then I'm going to let you do the rest on your own. So here we go. Coming down in a nice soft curved line that's a little bit curved on that diagonal. Coming over. And then I'm going to come down and in. Coming up and over down and in, going up and over, and down and in. See how that worked? That one's not exactly touching. Let's give that a little clean up there. All right, so you can see those are the three that I've done. You go ahead and do these three, and then we'll catch up. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to do those legs of the star. We're going to build outward before we go inward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same technique that I did before. So I'm going to start to work with these triangles right here. So you'll see that I'm just going to start to overdraw on those triangles that we had before. And then once I have those triangles, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to create the aura on the inside. So you can see that I'm just kind of going through and cleaning these up, making my lines nice and succinct. You can see I'm taking my time. And I'm sorry for the background noise. It sounds like my neighbors doing some construction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on the inside. I'm making a little dot and then I'm going to do a very soft aura on the inside of the piece. See how I'm really trying to take my time? That was a little wobbly. Let's try it again. There we go. Really getting down to it. And you know, you start to get into a groove with these things when you're working in the same direction. One of my favorite teachers talks about how you have a physical memory of what you're doing when you're doing something that's repetitive. And I really love that idea that you have a physical memory that we're working with as we're repeating something. So you can see that I'm just going around and getting those done. You go ahead and finish up yours and then we're gonna meet back up and we're gonna do a new tangle inside of those triangles. Okay, so for some of you who have taken class with me in person, you know that I'm very fascinated with uh, Polynesian art. And one of my favorite um, beautiful tangles that you can see in Polynesian art is a beautiful wave. And so we're gonna do a wave pattern inside of this piece here. And it's a really, really fun tangle to do. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and you can see here's the point at the edge. I'm going to come up about, I'm going to say maybe about a quarter of an inch again and come off of the top. And you can see that all I'm doing is making an arc. See how that just made an arc and made a little triangle up in there? So I'm going to touch at the other side and then I'm going to come in and make a little bit of a curve. So you can see it's almost like I'm starting a printemps here, yeah? Then once I've got my printemps in there, I'm gonna come out 
and I'm just going to hit the side so it looks like a soft wave. Let's do it again. So I'm going to turn to this next one. Remember, you're coming up and out, making that curve up at the top. See how there's that triangle that just appeared right here? And then all I'm going to do is make my curve coming in, and then I'm just going to come right back out again. He's a little wonky, but he'll do. I'm turning. You can see because I'm left-handed, I've got it off to the right just a little bit, just to make it easy for my hand. Coming in, and then out. Right? So coming up, doing the curve right off the top. So there's my little curve, right? You can see one and two. Or, you know, if you wanted to look at it this way, you could go ahead and just make the number six with a little curve in it and then turn it back and come back out. Oh, I really like that idea. Let's try that. That's kind of a neat idea. So I'm just going to come over here, make the letter six or the number six with a curve. That's super easy. You know me. I'm all about the easy. And over. Cool. You learn something every day. And then I'm going to come right back out again. Ooh, that made that super easy. I like that. Well, there you go. So there's your waves inside of the piece here. Give that a try or a whirl, if it were, as it were. And then uh, we're going to come back up and do some more tangling. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, so inside of where that wave is, we're going to add some lines to it just to give it some interest. So I'm going to come in and start to add some vertical lines into the piece here. And I'm just going to come down and create those in here as well. And you can see that that starts to give a lot of definition to that wave. So let's go back to this one. He's kind of a more bulbousy wave. That's okay with me. I like that they're a little bit different. If it was perfect, it, it wouldn't have any character. And I, I like it when a piece has some character to it. So you can see that I'm just getting those vertical lines in there the best way that I can. And then I'm just moving right along. So working around. And I'm just going to keep on rolling right through in here. So I'm going to finish up mine. You finish up yours. And then we're going to meet up and start to do some more work. So we've got three more to go, or two more to go. And I'll see you in a minute. So you can see it's really coming along just by doing those vertical lines. It really gave it a lot of depth and I'm really happy about that. It's also got a really nice flow now going behind the star. It's got a very nice three dimensional feel to it. So we're going to come to these outer triangles here and we're going to ink those in now. And you can see that I'm just coming up to the top here and letting those connect to those outward pieces. And just to be clear, it's not in the middle of the triangle, it's up a little bit higher. That way we can work inside of the space. It's giving us a little bit more space. So I'm coming in, going up towards the top, and I'm really staying away from the middle of those triangles, trying to give myself as much room to work in as I possibly can. So you can see I'm having a lot of fun with that. So I'm going to go all the way around and do that. Now on this one, I'm not going to aura inside of those triangles. So we're just going to finish up these last bits, and then we're going to throw a new tangle in there. Okay, so you can see now that I've had a chance to go all the way around. And we're going to do a really fun tangle in these. I'm, 
I love this. I, I kind of came up with this idea for another class and I'm using it in this particular piece. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blow this guy up nice and big. And you can see that I'm down at the bottom here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a little bit of a stem here. Not unlike how we would make a stem for poke leaf or poke root. Now so you can see there's my little stem there but instead of making the upside down happy face I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna come up towards the top I'm gonna make a little bit of a lollipop on the top of it. Once I've made that little lollipop I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make a little bit of an oval inside or almost like a little um, eye in there and then I'm gonna go ahead and make an aura and another aura. So I'll go over to the other side and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to curve out, make my stem, do the little lollipop, and then I'm going to come in and make that little arc just like so. So I'm going to go to the next one and do the same. So here we are. I'm arcing out. I'm making my little stem. Make my little oval lollipop there. I'm coming in and just doing a couple of arcs. I'll go over to the other side. I'm arcing out, making my stem, lollipop, and then coming in and making those lines. And you can see that that develops a really neat kind of feel to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do it again, arcing out. You can see I'm leaving space for the lollipop. Going ahead. And then I'll do the other side. Arcing out. Lollipop. And then coming in and making those lines. Oops, missed that one. All right, so I've got a couple more to go. You do yours, I'll do mine, and we'll meet back up. Okay, so let's look at the center of the piece here. Make that a little bit bigger. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by doing some overdrawing here and making sure that we've cleaned up the lines in the center. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start to create those outside Hershey's Kisses. And you're going to see that I'm going to kind of work my way inward here to get that kind of soft, clean look of the lines. So you can see that I'm moving through and creating as I go these really nice clean lines. And I'm going to start to work my way in towards the center after I finish going all the way around the piece here. So you can see that I've gone all the way around and now I'm going to start to work on the star. Now here's what's going to be unique about the star in the center here. I'm going to turn the piece and start to clean this up. But I want you to think about um, one of my favorite tangles <coughs> that um, I practice a lot is in Zeppel and we talk about in Zeppel we're rounding off the edges and I want you to think of the same thing with uh, with this. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to start to round off the edge here. You can see that I'm just going right into that area in the center here where I can round off the edge. Now, even if you decided to leave this 
just like this, it would be really, really neat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to blacken in the star and give it a real pop. And then later on, we're going to add um, some light highlights into the center of the piece. So I'm going to switch gears with my pen here, and I'm going to grab my Identa pen that we talked about a little bit earlier in class. And I'm working with the really nice thick side here. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to clean up and fill in the star with that nice rich black. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this will bring a lot of drama into the piece. You've heard me talk about this before, about how much I enjoy seeing a lot of that rich, dark black inside of a Zentangle. And this really is going to give it a real pop in towards the center and draw the eye in towards the center here. So I'm going to go all the way around and you can see that I'm being thoughtful about the way that I'm moving here and not going too quickly. I'm just working my way around and just getting right in there. You can see that I'm just kind of hovering around that circle and filling this in and getting right in there. And hopefully I'm staying on camera. I haven't been looking up at the screen very much. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I know it's so silly, this making of videos. All right, so here we go. I've gotten all the way around and look at how neat that is. I mean, that is, it's almost like a Turkish tile, which I think is really beautiful. If you've ever had the chance to see some of that beautiful Turkish uh, uh, ceramic work. Their stuff is just gorgeous and this is sort of reminding me of that. Okay, so go ahead, finish up your star, and then we are going to get going with color. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we are going to get ourselves started here with color and I'm going to start in our water feature, our wave for this piece, and I'm feeling the need for something tropical. You know, uh, I just I didn't get to go away on vacation this year so we're gonna we're gonna channel in some of those Hawaiian waves <laughs> all right so here we go I've got a really nice light green in my hands here this is called true green and this is PC910 and then I also have a darker color on standby this is the parrot green and I just want you to think of that beautiful tropical turquoise color that you would see uh, if you went to Hawaii or the Caribbean or any of those kind of places. Now for those of you who have never done color with me before, you know that this pencil that I have in my hand here is three different colors. It's light, it's medium, and it's dark. So it's all about the pressure that you put on the pencil. Now because this pencil is so light in its pigmentation, it's always nice to have a little bit of a darker pigmentation nearby so that you can get a little bit more depth out of that darker color. And that's why I always keep a darker color on standby. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to do a demo of how we're going to do the waves and then I'm going to send you on your merry way to do the waves here. So I'm going to start by going very lightly and in a circular like fashion inside of this wave. Now, as I do this, you can see that I'm getting a really nice soft saturation of color inside of that wave. Once I have that nice soft saturation, I'm going to start to add a little bit of shading into the piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by giving this a little bit more pressure on this pencil and I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch all the way on the side and on the bottom. Once I have that, I'm also going to go ahead and do the top. And I'm going to get all the way around that curve. 
You can see that that's already created a really beautiful highlight. Now I'm going to take some of that darker color, this is that parrot green that I was talking about earlier, and I'm going to start to bring that into the piece. Now you'll see that I don't have to press really hard in order to get that color to come right through. It's going to sh just show up naturally. You can see that I'm just really hugging the edge. And then once I've got that, I'm just going to come right through and get that all nicely etched in. And look at how that really starts to glow. Isn't that beautiful? Now, if you feel like there's a hard edge for you on where the darker color is, you can see I've got a little bit of an edge there. I'm going to go back in with my green and watch. I'm just going to blur out the edge just a little bit by adding a little bit of pressure. And you can see that that really softens it and gives it a glow. So that's the way that you're going to handle the waves. Now, I don't do this often but I am going to do it today because I think what we're going to do is we're going to end up making an ornament out of this piece. So I'm going to show a demo using black and white. I know, lose your mind, dun dun dun! The color girl is doing black and white. But for my traditionalists, I want you to have a way of expressing yourself during the holidays and I think this would make a gorgeous ornament. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my graphite. I just happen to have a mechanical pencil nearby and you're going to see me start to very lightly saturate the edges of this piece with some of that graphite. I'm going very, very lightly. I'm hardly touching the page at all. Now most of you know that I, I don't work in graphite very often. I enjoy the Prismacolor Pencil um, 1065, but I just wanted to offer something up that would um, be accessible for everybody. So I've got my tortillon, and I hope you have a tortillon too. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to blur out the edge of that wave with my tortillon. See how I'm leaving the light towards the center? And then once I have that, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of that darkness in the piece right along the edge here. I'm pressing a little bit harder, but I'm trying to be mindful not to break my lead. And I'm getting right all around here. And you'll notice that my technique is almost exactly the same as when I use the color. And I'm coming in now and I'm going to soften the piece just like so. And it's really lovely so that when I get both of those in there, you can see how neat they are doing, um, doing one in gray and one in color. So go ahead, I'm going to bring these out here, so let's see if I can get those out. So go ahead and do your waves, and I'm going to continue to do one in each. I'll do one in the black and white and one in the color, and we're going to be able to use both of these for our project here. Okay? All right, so I'm going to pull that off to the side, and I will catch up to you in a minute. Go ahead and do all your waves, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around. Love the way that looks. And I just want to show you what the black and white one looks like too. So isn't that so, so fun? So I'm going to continue on with the color. We'll carry on with the black and white too. Um, but for right now, we're going to work with the color. So I'm going to start to work inside of my between and the star here. And, uh, you know, some of you might know that I have been working on the idea of working with color pencils in my Prisma set that I don't normally gravitate to. And this is Jasmine. It's PC1012. And I really love this color. It actually reminds me a lot of sand, which I've used in a couple of my classes. But it has a really nice richness to it. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do uh, Betweed here. 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start very softly with jasmine and just start to lay down that color right over the top of my lines. You can see that I'm kind of letting my inner four-year-old out and not having a care in the world about those lines. Now you will notice that right here I'm leaving it alone. I'm going to use that as an accent later on. So you can see that I've gone over all of the between except for right there and then once I have that, I'm going to start to accentuate the between with a little bit of a darker color. This is um, uh, one that I, I like very much. This is PC1034, and I think that this is an okra of some sort. I'm not sure. I've used this one quite a bit. And what I'm going to do, and you can see that I've got a really sharp lead on this, is I'm going to come in and very softly dust the edge in with that really pretty kind of mustardy, it's almost like a, um, a brown mustard color. You can see that I'm just staying right on the edge of where the black is and keeping it nice and close. And once I've got that going all the way up, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to press a little bit harder. So you can see that I'm not pressing hard with this right now. Coming in and getting that down. And then I'll come back in and I'll press nice and hard along the line here. And that's going to get it to really start to glow. And it almost gives this kind of a braided feel, which is quite lovely. So I'm just getting in there and adding that as a really nice glowing central piece here. Now you can see that I can come up from the bottom and give that a little bit of a glow as well and then give it a real nice push right at the bottom and you can see that that gave that a nice softness. Now if I want to blur out my lines and make them a little bit softer, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Here's a really good example of a really hard line in here. So I can come in and I can just soften the edge and give that a really nice blurred out feeling without having those hard lines. And I don't even have to press hard. I can just get it to soften up with that original color. Now, you know, some of you have taken classes with me before and I've used a white colored pencil, but it's not really necessary here, but you can use it if you want to. So you're going to go around and you're going to do all of your betweeds just like that. Now, for those of you who are doing the black and white version of this class, I'm going to come in and do a little bit of shading into the black and white version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very softly start to add a little bit of graphite right along the edges of that between here. You can see that I'm just barely adding any kind of color or rather any kind of graphite at all because you can see that I'm limited in the space that I have and because when you're working with that Tershon it can really blur out the piece. You have to be very very careful not to do too much. So you can see that I'm just going to very very carefully blend it up I'm being very thoughtful to keep the light in there. Getting right in there. Now I can come down from the bottom and give that a little bit of graphite in there. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to give that a little bit of depth on the line. You can see that I'm staying right on that line. I'm not going any deeper. I really just want to give it a glow. So I'm getting right in there and working the outside edges too. And then once I've got that, I'm going to grab that tortillon again, torchon, however you want to say it. My teacher called it uh, a torchon. Some people call it tortillon. Who knows? I'm not French. There we go. 
All right, so there you can see really nice shading for our beautiful betweed. So go ahead, do those all the way around, and then we are going to come back and start to work on the centerpiece. I'll see you in a minute. Take your time, relax, and remember to breathe. Okay, so you can see this is really starting to come along, and I have the black and white one here as well. Woo, woo, doesn't that look fun? We're going to have some real fun with this one in a few minutes, but we're going to work on this piece a little bit more, and I'm going to start to work in the center area of the piece here. And I have two different colors in my hands here. I've got a process red, which is a favorite color of mine. This is, let's see here, this is PC994. I do love this process red. It's a great color. And then one of my other favorite colors, which is kind of misleading, this is magenta, and this is PC930. It's more crimson than magenta. I love this color, but I use it a little less than uh, less than the way that they use it. Uh, so let's see here. I'm going to take my process red first, and I'm going to start inside of the petals here. So I'm going to just come in right here, and I'm going to very softly use that process red. And you can see that that pencil is nice and sharp and I'm using that pencil in a circular motion so I get a really nice saturation of color here. And then once I've done that, I'm going to start to add a little bit of a heavier hand to it. So I'm going to start to give this just a little bit more depth by pushing a little bit harder and getting right in here. And then notice as I continue to work my way to center, I'm lightening up my hands so that I get a really nice fade off of that color. Can you see how that happened? It just got really, really nice and soft. Now I'm going to grab some of that magenta here and I'm going to bring it into the edge. And this is going to give it that pop that I'm going for. It's got a nice feel to it, really, really gorgeous, and it gets super, super glowy really fast. Now, we talked about the white pencil. I've got that PC938 in my hand here, and I'm going to just kind of blur that edge off. So I'm just going to softly blur the edge. And then notice how I'm starting to work my way to center, but I'm just going to stop right about there. Look at how gorgeous that is. Look at that glow on the edge and then that soft pink as we move into center. So we're going to go all the way around and we're going to do that in each of those petals. Now, if you are working with the, um, the black and white, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that mechanical pencil once again and I'm going to do a very similar feel to it. So I'm just coming in and I'm starting to add that color right along the edge. Remember when you're working with graphite you have to be pretty uh, pretty soft with it and pretty conservative with it because once you start grabbing the tortillon you're going to start to blur it out and you want to leave that light in towards the center, right? So you can see that I've kind of blended that out and got that really nice soft feel. And I'm going to go back out onto the edge now and give that a little bit of depth and darkness. You can see that that's coming in there and getting a nice depth and darkness here. I'm going to give that a little bit of push with that tortillon, but not a lot. And look at the drama, so dramatic. So go ahead, and if you're working in the black and white, you'll use that technique all the way around. And I'll see you in a minute. Go have fun and play. All right, so you can see that 
I've had a chance to fill in that flower and I just love that glowiness of that uh, process red with the magenta. It just has a really nice feel to it. So we're going to do a little carrying of color here. You have heard me say this a couple of times before. Carrying color just means that I'm going to take the color that I just used here and I'm going to bring it into our um, another part of the piece and that gives the eye a place to land. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coming into this area right down in here and I've got the process red in my hand and I'm very very gently adding a little bit of that process red around the lollipops here and I'm just coming into this area and filling it in nice and light getting all the way around. You can see I'm turning the tile to make it easy for my hand. Now once I've had a chance to fill that in, I'm going to come in with my magenta and I'm going to start to add some of that magenta in there. And you can see I'm not being overly cautious with it. I'm just laying it down in a nice medium way. And then I'm going to grab for that white pencil. So grabbing the white pencil, making sure that your white pencil is good and sharp. Let's go ahead and blow this up a little bit. And I'm going to blur off the edges. And it's going to give a really nice dramatic feel to this tip. And you can see I'm kind of carrying it up into the process red too, but doesn't that have like a really nice pastel-y feel to it, which is quite lovely. So softening up those edges, and getting right in there. Now some of you who have been in my classes before have done wallpaper with me, and this is a really great place to add a little bit of wallpaper. So I'm going to come back in with some of that magenta and I'm going to do a little bit of printemps in there. So you can see that I've got that darker color and I'm just going to add a little bit of printemps in the corner over here and I'll come in over here and I'll do the same thing over here just to give it a little bit of interest. Not a lot, just a little so that's how we're going to handle our corners. Now you can see that I've got some uneven edges in there. I'm just going to clean those up, make sure that they're nice and soft. And you're going to go around now all the way around the piece and do all of that inside of those areas. Now, for those of you who are doing the black and white, I'm going to grab my black and white piece. I'm really loving the way this piece is turning out, by the way. You know me. I'm always surprising myself every time I try something different. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in here with my mechanical pencil again and I'm just going to softly start to add a little bit of that light graphite in here. And then I'm going to grab that tortillon and I'm going to start to blur out those edges. So you can see that I'm getting right up in here and blurring out the edges. Now, once I've got that, I'm going to go back in and add some of the drama, right? Because we've got that nice soft gray now. Let's get right in here. And I'm going to go in and give this a little bit of drama, a little bit of darkness. Ooh la la. Once I've got that darkness, I'll come back in with the tortillon, give it a little softness right on the edges. And then once again, giving a little bit of wallpaper to the piece. So I'm just going to come right in, and give it some wallpaper. And I'll do some wallpaper over here. And you can see how pretty that is. Really nice feel to it. So you'll go all the way around and do the same thing on your edges. Go ahead, have some fun, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are. 
and this is really coming along super super fun so what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to bring a pop into the piece here and I really want to see something that's going to stand out from the rest of this so we're going to be using a really pretty color this is PC903 and I think this is true blue but I'm not sure and um, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to work on the center first now some of you may feel like you need to erase your lines in the center and I will do that just to appease but normally I really don't care about that kind of stuff I just let the color do the talking so I'm gonna come right into the center here and I'm gonna start by doing a really soft shade of that blue right in the center now once I've had a chance to do that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit more pressure to the piece and get a little bit more of that darkness going. You can see that I'm leaving some of the light in there. So I've got that light blue and a little bit darker and then I've got my point of light inside of the piece. Now I'm going to take a new color and bring it into the piece. This is Copenhagen blue. It's one of my favorite blues that Prisma makes. Um, this is PC906 and I'm going to come right onto the edge here and just give that edge a little bit of a heavy hand right in here and then I'm gonna come in believe it or not I'm gonna go back to that really pretty true green that I had earlier and I'm gonna make this look a little bit like a labradorite and I'm just going to start to sprinkle in some of that green right over the blue. So I'm just kind of blurring out the edge here. And then once I have that, I'm going to go for my white and I'm just going to soften it all up. So you can see that I'm just going right over the top of that dark blue and that green and then I'm gonna come right into the lightest blue and really play up the drama of those two and it really does look like the earth in there doesn't it it's just so beautiful to have that little splash of green in there and I'll just come back in and play with it until I get it the way that I want it to be really really pretty so go ahead and do your gem. If you need to pause me here, this is a great place to do it. Now, if you're still with me and you want to keep on going, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that original true blue again. This is the, uh, let's see here, I may be misspeaking. This is the PC903. And I'm going to carry that same color out into these areas. So I'm just going to go very, very softly and carry it out into these areas right in here and then what I'll do is I'll come back in and give this a little bit of a push with that same color and then I'll grab my white and I'll start to blur out my edge just a little bit come back in with the Copenhagen and just give it a little bit of depth now I'm going to go all the way around to all of these pieces here and do that very same thing. So go ahead and do that and then we'll meet up. Now for those of you who are doing your uh, black and white piece, I'm going to have you hold off because I have a different thing in mind. So I'll see you in a minute with that version. Okay, so for those of you who are doing the, um, the black and white version, don't get mad at me we are going to add some color here. 
but it's really really exciting because we're just going to use one color and carry it through and I've seen Rick and Maria do this before where they choose one contrasting color and carry it all the way through the piece and so you've seen me talking about the process red with um, the people who are doing the color class and I've got that magenta nearby so all I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the center of this piece and start to add a little bit of that color to it so I'm going to come in with the process red first and I'm going to very gently add in some of that really pretty process red and you can see that I'm leaving my light source and then I'm going to go in with that magenta in a minute. I'm going to do a little bit of a heavier process red right in here so you can see that I'm getting right in there with that process red and adding a little bit of depth to it. And look at how that color is popping next to that black and white. It's so pretty. Now I'm going to go in with that magenta and give it a real kick. I'm just giving it that really pretty kick that we're looking for. And look at how that's glowing next to the black and white. Woo, so pretty. So I'm just going to come in with that white and just start to blur out my edges a little bit. Look at how gorgeous that is. Mm -mm -mm. So pretty. And then we're going to come in with a little bit more of that magenta just to give it a little bit of that edginess. And I might even just scrape the edge right over here just to give it that orbness that I'm looking for. Now, you saw with the other group, the same thing is going to happen right in here. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and clean in there. I'll come back in with a little bit of black in a minute. So I'm going to go in with the process red right in here. Give it a little bit of a push. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a blur. Coming in with my magenta now. Watch how that starts to glow. So pretty. So we're going to go around to all of these and do the very same thing all the way through. Okay, so you do yours and then we're going to come back and meet up. Okay, so I'm loving that blue. Super pretty. So we're going to start to work on the outer edges of our piece here. So you're going to see me start to come into the legs of the star. I have that same blue that I've been working with this whole time here. This is the PC903. And I'm just going to start to come in and I'm going to start to add a little bit of that blue right at the top and right at the bottom. See how I'm leaving a little bit of light source in there? I'm going to go ahead and do the same right over here and right over here. Now, once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of the darkness here, a little bit of that Copenhagen blue again there, and a little bit of it here. Now watch. I'm going to grab that white pencil again and I'm just going to give it a blur. Just a little blur. And you can see how that gives that a really neat kind of slaty blue feel to it. So I'm going to go all the way around the star and do the same thing. Now I'm going to do the same treatment on the outside edges as well. So I'm just going to show you both in here. So I'm going to come in to where my really fun wave is and I'm going to do the same thing in here and then watch I'm going to come back in with that Copenhagen blue one here and one here and remember you don't have to use the same colors as me you can use any colors you want and then I'm going ahead and getting right in here and you 
using that white pencil so that when I go all the way around that blue is going to pull from the center into here all the way out into our edges okay so go ahead finish those uh, pieces up and then I'm going to show you how to do it on the gray tile so I've got my gray tile here and look at how cool that is how striking is it I've just added one color and look at how it just pops right off the top of that so this is going to be a really, really festive piece. I mean, it looks like a ruby, doesn't it? It's just so gorgeous. So I'm going to do the same thing in here. I'm going to come in. I'm working with the process red first. This is the PC994. Very, very lightly starting to add it up at the top, adding a little bit of it at the bottom, a little bit in here, and a little bit in here. coming in and adding a little bit of the magenta right on the tips getting that ruby ruby red thinking of the Wizard of Oz and her little ruby slippers and going in and grabbing that and bringing it up and look at how that makes that between just come right off the page just shoots it right off it's so cool and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab now that process right again and do the same thing right in here. So I've got it right here and right here. A little bit of that at the bottom. See how I'm leaving in the light right in here and right in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that magenta. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring in that white, blur it out. Wearing this out, getting that nice pastel feel. Look at that. Oh, so, so cool. Okay, so go ahead, go all the way around, do yours, and I'll meet you, meet with you in a few minutes. Okay, so you can see this is really starting to come to life. I really love this piece. Super fun. So I'm going to go back to that jasmine color that we were working with earlier. This is a PC1, uh, let's see here, 1012. I'm going to pull that up there so that you can see that. PC1012, this is the jasmine. And we're going to carry that color from right here to the outside edges. And that's going to help our eye to land in this really nice soft space. So I'm just going to come into this area right here for the demo and show you what I'm working on. So coming in and adding some of that really pretty golden wheat color. And you think of a, a field of wheat. That's the color that I think of when I when I look at this color. And then I'm going to grab for some of that okra that we were using earlier as well. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of intensity. So you're going to see that I'm giving this just a little bit of intensity right along the edges. And I'll come right up in here as well. And I'm going to go around here. And up in here. And then I'm going to grab for that white and I'm going to start to blend in and let's make this a little bit bigger so you can really see what I'm doing. I'm going to blend in those colors, make them nice and soft and I'll do the same thing over here and the same thing over here. And you can see how gorgeous that is next to that red. Isn't that lovely? And if you wanted to, you could even come into the lollipops and add a little bit of that into the lollipops as well. Just kind of get them to pop off and have a little bit of their own fun in the piece. So if you're doing the color one, this is what you're going to do next. Now, if you are working in the black and white, I'm going to pull this in right now. This is so fun and I just love the way that this piece is starting to work. But it 
is going to need something on the outside edge to really give it a zing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with that black that we were using right in the center. And while I have this here, you can see that I got a little overzealous with some of that white. So I'm going to clean up that white in there. I'm going to go into the outside edge now and I'm just going to add some black into the outside edge. So you can see I'm working with my IdentiPen and just being very thoughtful about how I'm putting down that color. And once I have that in there, I'm going to start to turn it. and get it all the way around the edges. And you can see that I'm being very mindful to really saturate the black because we don't want any of those white pieces from the background to poke through. We want rich, deep black. going all the way around this so that when I pull it away, look at how cool that's going to be. It's going to be gorgeous. So go ahead and do the black all the way around the edges and we're going to meet up in a minute. Okay, so we are getting down to it here and getting close to the end of our piece, but I'm very excited with the way that these are turning out. We're going to be doing some highlighting here just to bring a little bit of dimension into our pieces. And so I am pulling out my Signo Uniball pen. This is my favorite white pen. It is a little cranky pants, but it is a great pen to work with. So I'm going to start with our color piece and then I'm going to come over to our black and white piece in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up on this a little bit and I'm going to turn this piece to the side. And we're just going to start by working with our pen and getting it started. And for me, I just run it along my skin and just get it to go. We're going to do a highlight right inside of our gemstone here. And I'll add a couple of dots on each side just to give that a little bit of dimension. And then I'm going to do some highlights inside of the black. I'm going to add some rivets to it right here and there. And then once I have that, if I want to, I'm going to come up into my, uh, my waves in here and I'm going to add some white onto the edges of the waves. So you can see I'm coming right here onto the edge. And then I'm going to add some dots right here and right here. And that's going to give that a little bit of dimension. So you'll see me kind of go around and do that on all of the waves. So I've got that in the waves there. And then finally, for this piece, I'm going to add some dots right along the center of our flower here, just to give it some interest. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a big dot first, and then a smaller dot, and then my smallest dot. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And you can see as I turn the piece, that's going to give it a little bit of movement. And it's really fun to work on. I love doing dots. So I, I tangle with a group of uh, women that we all got our CZT um, within the same year and um, they gave me the nickname of Rom Dot. So I'm living up to my nickname here by putting in my Rom Dots. And there it is. So that's really fun to do inside of the piece. Now one thing I neglected to show you for the color um, 
is I forgot I started getting overzealous with my waves and I left one blank as soon as I figured out what I was doing. So I'm just taking the same color from here and I'm going to bring it into my waves. See how I'm bringing that nice yellow around the wave here and then I'm going to go along the top and I'm going to do the same here and I'll come back in with some of that ochre color and give that a little bit of dimensionality. And you can see that I had done that around the outside edges and just forgot to put it in the piece. It happens every once in a while. I make a little, a little scuffle up. So go ahead and finish up your piece with this one. And now I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the black and white one. So this piece has really stolen my heart quite a bit. So I am going to do just a skosh of white highlighting right on the center piece, but let's go ahead and turn this so that we can bring it in. And I'm just going to come in with some of that white if it'll allow me. And I'm going to bring some dimension into that gem. I'm going really lightly with this pen. They are very cranky pants, these pens. And then I'll come in and I'll add a couple of dots on the outside and right in here just to give that a little bit of dimension. Okay, so we're going to have some fun with some metallic pens now. And I've got the really, really fun Jelly Roll uh, gold in my hands. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some rivets right into the outside of the piece here, just to give this a little bit of dimension and fun. You know, it's always neat to try something different. And I really thought that the metallics would really show up quite nicely on here. So we're going to carry on with that. And I'm also going to go around the outside edge. You can see that I'm right in here. And I'm just going to come in. And I've started one already. So I'm just going to go uh, right in here and do one more. And then one more. And then one more right there. So you're going to see me go around the piece with the gold and it's going to be just this really neat festive way to add a little bit of color and a little bit of dimension without getting overzealous. So you can see that when I pull out how fun that outside edge is with the gold dots. So you can go ahead and add some of those gold dots on your outside edge. I'm using the gold jelly roll, but you can use uh, any kind of metallic pen that will work for you in this piece. And then I am going to add some black dots into this piece as well, uh, not unlike what I did with the other piece where I added some dots in the center to give it some dimension. So I'm back with my black pen here. And I'm just going to come in and add fairly large, then a medium, and then a small. So I'm just going to work my way around the piece just like I did on the other. Now, you can go all the way around the piece and do that. There is another thing that you can do where you can come in with some of your white highlighter pen. So I'm going back to the Signo just for a moment. And I'm just going to come in and add a little bit of white right inside the edge here to give those little gemstones a little pop. So go ahead, have some fun. We're going to meet up here in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to finish them up. 
I'm gonna lift this one up for you so that you can see how cool that metallic shimmer is on the piece. It just really brings a lot of dimension and interest into it. I just uh, love how that looks. So this one really came out really, really fun. I also added a little bit of white highlighting inside of the uh, waves. You can see there's a little bit of the white highlighting all the way around just to give it a little bit more dimension and keep it interesting. And then for this one, I started to uh, play with the idea of doing some black dots around the outside just to give a correlation between the inside and the outside. And I really like the way that that came out as well. Super fun. Now, uh, for those of you who are uh, interested, I'm going to turn this into a ornament for Christmas. I've had a student reach out to me that uh, lives overseas and wants to make some Christmas ornaments, and it takes a little while for the mail to get all of those uh, things to where they need to be by Christmas, especially if you're overseas. And so um, we're going to do a little ornament. I've made a third one, and here comes the third one, and this is going to be the third piece uh, to the ornament. So like I always say, it's really fun to try different things with uh, each uh, composition that we do. And every time I try it differently, I'm always surprised by the outcome. So it is really fun. So if you can hang on for a minute or so, I'm going to do an instructional video on how to turn this into an ornament. And we'll go from there. Now, for those of you who aren't interested in turning it into an ornament, I would love it if you would give us a nice review on YouTube. Uh, give me a thumbs up or say something nice that helps people to find us, which is always good. And um, if you'd like to join our Facebook page, we have a really great community. It's called the Tangled Yogi Art Community page. And uh, we've got a, just a very supportive community. And we all love to share our work on that site. It's a lot of fun. And then lastly, uh, if you want to support me in uh, this time of social distancing, you can go to tangledyogi.com and check out our honeycomb tiles. These tiles are really, really wonderful, and um, it's how I support my business. So I hope that you will come and check it out. We also have them in a really beautiful tan color as well. All right. So with that said, uh, hang on for a few minutes and we are going to get started with a nice ornament for Christmas with these tiles. Okay, so here we are and we are going to start to make this into a little bit of a, an ornament for Christmas. So I have here a bone folder. If you have one of these, you can go ahead and use it. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. It just helps to make your creases a little bit more pronounced when you're doing some folding. I also happen to have some jump rings that I got at Michael's. These are great for attaching to the top of the ornament so that when you uh, are attaching a little piece of twine or string or in this case I happen to have a pretty little piece of leather that I'm going to use for it um, you have a little place to put it in so those are the things that you'll need for this part no big deal and if you happen to have a little you know crystal or something like that you can attach to the bottom of the piece that's always fun as well so I'm just going to start by taking three of these. So if you have three that you have done, um, go for it. If you don't, you know what you can always do is take this down to Kinko's, make a couple of copies and cut them out, and then you are good to go for making an ornament. So you don't have to worry about recreating over and over again. When you take it to Kinko's, just ask them for 60 pound paper or 80 pound paper. You want something that's a little bit more substantial than copier paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to fold these. And you can see that I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to fold it over. Notice how I'm trying to line up with my corner here. I've got myself lined up in the corner and I'm going to try to make this as big as I possibly can. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, so now I've got that lined up in the corner here. I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to make that nice and strong. So I've got that first one nice and folded. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do my second one. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to get my corners to line up here. Getting right in there. And see 
see that I'm trying to do the best that I can with what I have. It's the name of the game during the COVID days, right? So I've folded that over. And now finally, I'm going to do one more right here. So I'm just taking it, lining it up. Trying to get that to go. This one's proving to be a little bit more difficult because the paper that I used was a little bit stronger. All right, so you can see now that I've been able to fold all of these. Now with three of these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna line them up. And let's see if I can fold out just a little bit. I'm gonna line these all up so that when they attach, we get this really beautiful three-dimensional shape with all of our pretty little pieces here, okay? So what that's gonna look like is we are going to go ahead and glue the backs of all of these together. So I'm just gonna start with my glue stick and I did neglect to mention that you will need a glue stick for this. Um, but if you have tacky glue, you can always use tacky glue as well. So I've got my little glue stick here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just do the perimeter of this piece right here. And then I'll go ahead and get right into the center. And then I'll start by bringing these two together. So you can see that I'm going back to back with these two. And you can see that they're gonna line up quite nicely. Now you'll notice that I've left this open in here, right? So both of these are open. And then I'm gonna grab this last piece and I'm gonna do glue all over the back of it. So I'm just gonna run that glue stick all the way around. Get that really nice and sticky. Bringing that in, getting the folds to come together, trying to line that up the best way that I can here. You wanna make sure that we get this really, really nice. You can see this is slightly off here, so I need to make sure that I've got that really deep in there. I'm just starting to make sure that my edges are nice and clean. Folding helps. And then once I have that, you can see that all my sides are now connected, yeah? That makes sense? Hopefully that made a whole lot of sense. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to attach uh, the gold, or rather the uh, jump ring through the top here so that when it spins, it will have some dimension to it. You could do it like this, but I think it's better coming from the top. So really trying to make, that th make those pieces come together. And you may wanna wait until they're completely dry, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to try to make sure that everything's ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna let this dry for a minute, and then I'm gonna come in with a little hole punch for the top of this piece. Now, if you don't have a hole punch, you could always use um, a tack. Tacks are great for popping holes into pieces. So if you have like a thumb tack or um, one that has a little head on it, you could use that or a hole punch. All right, I'll come back when this is dry and then we'll finish this up. Okay, so you can see that this has had a chance to dry here and it's pretty much ready to go. So um, for those of you who don't have a hole punch, you could always use a thumbtack to pierce through the paper here. I've gone in with my, uh, with my little hole punch and I've put a little hole as close to center as I possibly could. And I've got my little jump ring here. You can see that the little jump ring, it's really easy to open and close, which is really quite nice. And I'll just go ahead and I'll pop that little jump ring in through the top here and I'm going to close it as much as I can. 
just to get it to to go so you can see that that's going to hang and be able to turn from this space here. So next I'm gonna grab a piece of string or some a little bit of leather so that it will hang and then you can hang it from a, a Christmas tree or from a window, whatever kind of speaks to you. So that's gonna be my next part. So I'm just gonna grab a little piece of string. Let's see what I have here. Got this little piece of twine and this is really nice. It's kind of like a soft suede leather. And I'm gonna go ahead and loop this through inside of the piece. Now, if you're into beading, you could do, you know, some fishing line with this and do some really pretty beading and really make it ornate. I'm not much of a beater, I'm more of a tangler, but this is really fun to do as well. So it's just kind of soft and simple. And you can see that when this hangs from this, it'll be really easy for it to move around. So there you have it. Here's our really pretty ornament. I hope you enjoyed the class. Please give us a thumbs up on our YouTube or leave us a nice review. Once again, my name is Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi, and I hope you enjoyed making this really fun class with me. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.